Hello and welcome to SV Presents. I'm your host Wyatt Mays. Today we feature a short film by the name Blurry Signals, co-directed by Samantha DeMario and Nicholas Abohamed. So, uh, first things first, it's really unusual that you have co-directors on a project. So how did you guys come to make that decision? You want to take it, Sam? Well, we had a couple classes together and we decided that like we've worked well together before and we figured why not do our final together. So. Yeah, we, just, we were just like, let's do this thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sam and I kind of like, like she said, we've known each other for years and we've been in classes together. So when we found out we could work together on a film two final, it was like, oh yeah, we should totally do this because we get each other. And like, I know if I do something that doesn't make sense, Sam's going to call me out on it. And okay, so she's, she's your rock. And, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's yeah. really cool. That's really cool. So, um, Nicholas, I understand that this is really your brainchild. Uh, what inspired you to uh, make this film? I mean, there was a lot of things that inspired me to go ahead with this script. Mainly, I originally started off with a pretty different concept for what became Blurry Signals. Okay. Kind of, it started off as like a slapstick, short of all things, yeah. But eventually, I was watching a lot of Woody Allen movies and getting into Woody Allen, and then I just ended up kind of trying to... So you still wanted to go with like a slapstick breakup movie? Yeah, at first I was pretty dead set on that and the more I wrote and rewrote the script, the more it just became dramatic. Okay, all right, so I kind of see what you mean. So why do breakups like interest you so much then? Well, I mean, originally before I became a comm student, I was pretty dead set in going into psychology. That was one of the things I looked at as a major. So I've always been like psychologically minded as a person. So to do a breakup story, you're kind of doing like a case study in a way. You're studying this character and you know these two people really and going, well, what makes them tick and how are they flawed and why do they act the way they do? So I thought that would be just really interesting to cover. Really? So the psychology aspect that really you know helps you get, in the, get like take a look at the characters a little bit more closely. Do you think yeah. that helps you out a lot? Definitely. So what made you switch from psychology to media then? Well. I mean, I've always been like a huge film geek, you know, movies okay. are like my favorite thing in the world. So when it came down to actually declaring a major and deciding what I want to study, I looked at psychology and I said, that's a lot of school. And like, on the other hand, I could go into film or TV and do something that also really grabs me and captivates me. And I could just apply psychology into that, hopefully. All right, that's interesting. So, and you've always been a media, correct? I've always been a media major. I originally wanted to be like a teacher, but like okay. <laughs> that was like back in high school. And then just like randomly one day, I'm like, yeah, no, I don't like people enough to wanna. <laughs> you don't like people <laughs> enough to want like to. I don't like kids enough to <laughs> wanna stand in front of them all day and teach them. So I was just like, so what else do I love? And I took media tech in high school, my junior year, and okay. I fell in love. And then ever since then, I'm like, yeah, okay. this is the thing that I want. <laughs> so did you guys know each other before college, or? No, we actually no? we actually met in acting one with Dr. Strobel. Yeah. You know, like, like our sophomore, sophomore year. year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we like did like one of our scenes together, and we just kind of became friends after that. And then after you guys became friends, you started working on a couple of different film projects, correct? Yeah. I mean, well, we there was like a year lull. Yeah, because, we like, stopped. We didn't really like keep connected for like junior year. Like we weren't like if we saw each other, we'd be like, oh hi or something like that. But okay. it wasn't yeah. like we were like friends like on like a day to day basis. We had a couple classes together our fall semester film and uh advanced tv advanced tv yeah, yeah. okay so. but you guys have worked on like you guys i think you guys said like before the show like three projects before yeah blurry yes. signals wasn't the first time we did a short together yeah okay there was one it was another one of his projects like most of the time when we work together it's like his project that i just kind of help him <laughs> like yeah. help right. out and um it was just like a totally like personal thing like afterlife Oh, that yeah. was like that That's was the right. first. That was the first one because he was like talking to me. He's like, "Yeah, I need this. I can't find an actor for this one part." And I'm like, "I can do it." <laughs> cool. Well, before we go any further, uh, let's take a look at Blurry Signals.
So, did you ever, like, finish that sketch you were working on? Oh, yeah. I'll go grab it. You know, for a while I couldn't find my rhythm with this one. I was worried that the spark might have been gone, or at least fading, and there was nothing I could do about it. That's silly, isn't it? Anyway, here it is. Good, right? You're a regular Picasso. Come on, you really think so? Do... do I bore you? What? Are you unhappy? I don't know. You, you said you were worried that the spark was gone. John, I was talking about... What's this really about? Is it me? Have I done something to upset you? It's the sketch, isn't it? I was worried you were... No, wouldn't... Allie, the sketch is fine. It's... It's just that... Look, you're really great, but... Why did you just do that? Allie, can, can we continue this later? I, I gotta get going to work. I thought you had it off. We had tickets to a show. Yeah, well things change, Allie. I'm sorry. I, I really gotta get going. How about we get a bite later? You know, meet at the diner at 8? Thanks for the sketch, by the way. Yeah, I really, really liked it. Yeah, great, great composition. <laughs> Wow, that, you know, it's, what I really like about that film is that you have to watch it more than once, and I cannot, I, I really, that, that was actually absolutely fantastic. Thanks. But the first thing that you do see on the first time you watch it, though, is the fact that you guys shot in a widescreen format. Did you guys use markers for that, or were you trying to go for a certain look? Like, how did you guys exactly pull that off? Well, I mean, I knew from the start that we were going to try and do, like, the shortened cinema scope, but we didn't actually use markers or put anything on the camera to know where we're cropping. And when it came to editing it, it was kind of annoying because sometimes, you know, you'd get a really bad shot out of it. Okay. Which led to maybe having to reshoot something. Yeah, there was a couple, there was a couple of reshoots that just weren't. Yeah. Like, there was like an afternoon of reshooting yeah. done there. Okay. But, yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. So, but you guys wanted to go for that cinematic look. Oh, like, absolutely. Hands down. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. I like that. So, as far as the story goes, is it looks like you guys put a year, what looked like a year-long relationship in about 45 seconds, like under a minute. Most filmmakers might have just went straight to the kitchen table scene and then just break them up from there. Why did you guys decide to show the entire relationship before you broke them up? Well, if I remember correctly, it was actually an assignment requirement to feature a montage in there. Okay. And I was originally kind of like against the idea of doing it because I wanted more time in the actual breakup. I wanted more to actually transpire between the characters. But in the process of writing and rewriting it, I thought it would be a really great idea to put the montage in because you get that contrast of they're happy together and then suddenly not exactly. Things go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Things go wrong, that, mm -hmm. like a lot of us. I think we've all really been there. But uh, I have to ask you, though, the significance of the sketch. When you watch that film, it looks like that sketch takes place is the same exact frame when they're standing somewhere in New York on a snowy mountain just looking out. Uh, what was the, was that the exact sketch? Was that the exact scene that you're trying to sketch out? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, so what was the significance of that? Well, I mean, I've heard like some people have gotten completely different meanings out of that scene, but for me, when I wrote it, I kind of wanted the character of um, Allie 
to hand him this sketch and be like, this is a moment that made me really happy. It's immortalized. This is how we feel and how we feel about each other forever. And I wanted John's response to be completely deadpan. Like, he doesn't see eye to eye, eye, uh, eye, to eye with her anymore. He doesn't sympathize with that, so he destroys it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but destroying someone's artwork, though. That's a really personal thing to do to somebody. If you destroy someone's artwork, you're trying to break their heart. Why did you make the character, Nick, your character, and such a jerk? Honestly, um, well, I think it goes back to like my whole interest in psychology, because I find the most interesting people in the world are people who think they're the nicest person in the world, and they're nice, but they're actually awful human beings. So you have John who, as a character, he was trying to break up with her. He was trying to be nice about it, but he was failing and struggling to find the words to do it. So he just kind of resorts to destroying her art because it's the only way he could physically get the message across. Okay. Sam, did you have any input on that? I mean, I feel like Nick <laughs> kind of <laughs> was able to hit the nail on the head with that one. Yeah. I mean, when I first read the script, because he's the one that wrote it, I saw, like, I couldn't believe how terrible John was and like we were making a joke about it because it's like if a guy ever did that to me like I like like I wouldn't be so laid back about it mm -hmm. I would flip <laughs> and I feel like I think that's like an interesting thing about Allie's character and how she just kind of is just like why would you do that instead right. of having like a bigger outburst about it. Well, Nick, you mentioned earlier that the uh, film, uh, well, you guys both actually said it, that the film really have, like, has like a Woody Allen uh, feel towards it. So I know that you and your co-star, Jeanette, actually did perform a scene in Jerry Bill's acting <laughs> class <laughs> while you guys were shooting this. So if we could actually take a look at that, uh, that'd be great. So let's roll it. Where's the spider? It really is lovely. Oh, he's in the bathroom. Oh, is he, is he in the bathroom? Hey! Don't squish it, okay? And, and after it's dead, flush it down the toilet and, and flush it a couple times. Darling, darling, I've been killing spiders since I was 30, okay? Oh, what? Big spider. Yeah? Yeah, you got, you got two of them in there. I mean, two of them. Too? Yeah, I mean, I didn't think it would be that big a deal, but you know, you got a serious spider problem in there. You you, you got a broom or something with a, just like a... I think I left it at your house. What about a snow shovel? I mean, something. Come oh, on. I, I think I left it there. I'm sorry. It's fine. Here, give me, give me this. Wait, 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 wait. What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing with it? Darling, you got a spider in there the size of a Buick. Oh, okay. an iconic moment from a really, really great director. So I have to ask you, how much did, you know, playing that scene and that role from a classic movie like Annie Hall influence the production of this film? I mean, it, it influenced the production in a monumental way simply because I mean, it's Woody Allen, it's Annie Hall. It's the most iconic romantic movie ever, you know? So to be working on a script about a breakup and not want to take a cue from Annie Hall, it's kind of a ridiculous idea, I mean, it's just so perfect. And in having to rehearse for the Annie Hall scene, you're studying dialogue by Woody Allen and you're studying character motivations for all his stories. Right. So a lot of it just found its way into my own short. Okay, wow. So I also understand that you guys are uh, about to make something new next week. Uh, if you guys can give us the name of it real quick, that'd be really nice. The working title for the short is IRL. IRL. Well, yeah. that sounds very exciting. I can't wait to watch it. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Be sure to subscribe to the SA Presents YouTube page. And as always, special thanks to our studio manager, Al Clark. This has been SFA Presents. Have a good evening. <laughs>